janitor, the janitor decided to walk in in the middle of the presentation. <laughs> so, getting back to it, what did I do to get this thing to work? Um, I happen to have this this machine. I have on another partition uh, Windows 7 installed, and um, what I did is I just went into that partition, which I think it. It's really hard to tell what's what here, but I think it's this one here. Yeah, it is. And there's my Lacert directory, and I went. I just basically copied the entire contents of a successful install from here into now. Where are some things that I need to explain? Okay, the way Wine works is I guess I'll close the door completely to see all my notes. And all my obstacles as I set up a new computer. Um, the way wine works is that it will. Yeah, I'm a mess. <laughs> the inside of a trash can. It will create a fake directory. Now the thing is, uh, here we go in Ubuntu. We got show hidden files. <sighs> in the GNOME. This .cx office is an environment. These are all bottles. That's Case World 5 bottle. That's a Lacert bottle. This I was I set up a, a bottle as a, to advertise itself as Vista, and then I tried to install as many service packs as I could first to get um, Pro System to install, perhaps in the bottle, but still didn't work. So. <laughs> That, that's a nothing bottle. I got you know, Mass 90 bottle, Internet Explorer 7 bottle, Office bottle. And some of these, I, at the end, at the end of the day, I really don't like having these separated because it means you have to con do some configuration for each one of them. And oh, desktop data and installers are not bottles, by the way. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bottles I'm using. And a ninth one I might <laughs> might want to use. Okay. Inside this, let's just take Lacert, because I'm talking about that, or at least trying to, without getting overcomplicated. This here, this folder to wine is this is the base of the C drive to wine. Wine pretends to be Windows, basically. It, it it's there, there there's no Windows code in there, there's just people attempting to to get Wine to run Windows apps in Linux, and uh, as a part of that, the, the Windows apps want to know where the C drive is, and so Wine is configured to call drive underscore uh, the folder drive underscore C uh, as the, the C drive for the Lacert bottle. And what I did is I just copied into this directory of seven tax everything that I had found over here and this is actually the Windows drive you're able to view it and look at it from from Linux you, you, you may or may not be able to look at your um, Linux drive from Windows depending on what kind of file system you pick to set it up with but you can view even add even move files over to Windows from Linux because uh, you can't have uh, Christmas without Linux soft, I guess, right? Okay. Okay, so then here, you know, I did a full install. I just copied them over. And then what I did is there was this uh, tool in that comes with Crossover Office only. It's called Crossover Office Run. It brings up a run command, looks like what you're familiar with in your Windows. I picked the bottle that I wanted to use, and, and I wanted Lacert to run in the Lacert bottle. This was uh, the bottle I used to, to attempt to install Lacert. I did it two or three times, and during the install, it failed after basically what happened. What happens during the install is Lacert will drop a bunch of zip files into its directory after it checks for your license. And then when it got to the step where it was trying to find out or trying to go to the next step to unzip those files and place all the files where they belonged in the end, it couldn't unzip the files. Well, I was able to unzip the files themselves, and I'm digressing. This isn't the answer to how I got this to run. I'm just explaining what happened to stop me. Um, I was able to unzip them, but where these uh, folders unzipped and placed the files by just placing them in the directory that the zip files were in, um, 
didn't lead to a successful install. There, there's more, you know, files got moved around additionally after that, and it would, it would just it would have been just too many files to move, too easy to screw up. But anyway, um, if your office has a 10 user license for Lacert, you do the Lacert install on one desk, and then you copy all the contents of the Lacert direct subdirectory on your Windows drive, and you move them into these little um, environments here, what you do is you, um, once you're using the bottle Lacert, where it says command, that's a little misleading, but what I did is I browsed for the um, Lacert directory, and I happen to know the executable is w07tax.exe, and then I open that, and I run it. Ah, scanning for viruses is getting me annoyed. And then it, there it is. It starts up. And you notice I'm still in exempt organizations there because I'm using the same bottle. Okay, I just exit it. Now, what happens is usually not too long after you get out of this thing, you might have to hit cancel. I'm not sure, but... Yeah, okay, good. It stops on its own, a little bit, and then you press this button called Create Launcher, and you get your icon there. That seems a lot easier if you're installing to each desk. <laughs> and again, you could also copy over the entire .cx office directory, and all your bottles will be configured and ready. So instead of having to reinstall apps at each desk, now you have the option of basically... Um, copying over a, a .cx office directory to each desk is going to have a Linux distribution on it along with the install crossover pro uh, executable that you download from code weavers you execute it like I showed and it runs and voila you got your whole setup there except that the except that the uh, icons aren't going to be on the desktop but of course, you can take a measure, <laughs> and you can do something about that by even copying over, um, if I could find the desktop directory in GNOME. Uh, there, oh, there it is. Okay, so if you copied all these icons as well and placed it in the home directory of the user involved. Now, aha, here's one thing. My name is not Jack, <laughs> and there's a reason why I always set up the user as just Jack. Uh, Karen is set up as Jack, is that way because these um, these icons point specifically to Home Jack. So you know if you set up your Linux to have um, a different username for each user, their their real name, then you'd have to go in and you have to edit each one of these, and have, you know, so they would launch. Uh, to from Jack to the name of the other person. I've done that before, and it's 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 a time-consuming hassle. It's not really worth it. I would just stick with one username. Okay, so uh, I'll stop here, and I'll get back to the condition of the. Uh,